From Tatooine to Mustafa, the best of the Yadda Rim It's the one and only Star Bazaar, yeah Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Star Bazaar. This is ya boy, Turkish Delight, top reporter, most charming man on the battlefront. And today, we have a Star Wars gaming news update to go over, including some news in the world of Battlefront 2, some new rumors around Jedi, Fallen Order, and mobile game news. Let's check it out. We are going to jump right into it and start with the unconfirmed rumor for Jedi Fallen Order that has caught the attention of some people since New Year's Eve. Let me say that again, this is only a rumor and should be treated as such, but if it turns out to be true, it would bring Fallen Order that much closer to the continuity and especially make it feel like a part of the overall Clone Wars experience. Jason Ward of MakingStarWars.net and who hosts the Making Star Wars podcast made a pretty cryptic tweet on New Year's Eve about a possible character we could see returning from the Clone Wars animated series to make an appearance in an upcoming Star Wars game. He talks about an idea and connection that fans of both Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels have made in the past. The tweet reads, Barris is a sister, video game, LOL. Now, clearly, the only Barris he could be talking about is Barris Offee. Padawan and defector of the Jedi Order, whom we meet in Season 2 of the Clone Wars animated show. By sister, we can only assume he means a member of the Emperor's Inquisitorius, the group tasked with hunting down and killing surviving Jedi after Order 66. Since Fallen Order is said to be set right after Order 66, we believe this is what Jason is talking about here. Fans have actually long speculated Barriss was in the Rebels animated show as an Inquisitor the whole time after we meet the seventh sister, one of the secondary antagonists of the show, who just so happens to be a Miri Allen, the same species that Barris is. It's never been stated Barris is the seventh sister, however, and Dave Filoni, the creator of Clone Wars and Barris's character, has said in the past that they have not been written to be the same person. That doesn't necessarily mean they aren't, though, and fun fact, Barris was originally supposed to die at the end of the Clone Wars arc where she frames Ahsoka but Filoni had come out and said he, quote, had plans for her character, so it was cut. Could we be seeing the start of those said plans? Just to put it out there, Making Star Wars is a generally reliable source of insider information from Lucasfilm itself, with the website hosting set photos from upcoming Star Wars projects and interviews with Lucasfilm employees and other things of that nature. So unless Jason is being intentionally misleading here, which I don't believe he has a history of doing, I'm inclined to give this rumor some attention. Or it could have straight up been drunk New Year's Eve talk, I'm not ruling that out either. The LOL at the end may be a bit suspicious, but he hasn't deleted the tweet. It's still up for the public to see, so who knows. Let me know what you think about Barris possibly being an Inquisitor in Fallen Order down in the comments. Do you think it might be the case? Or do you think he tweeted that for gullible content creators to make clickbait videos like this one? You be the judge. Moving on to some Battlefront 2 news, our hero designer Guillaume Miraz has information on some hero fixes we are seeing in the next patch. Guillaume stated he will be flying back from vacation next week to polish Dooku's beard, which is awesome to hear in and of itself. But Brad, out on Twitter, responds to this asking if Guillaume could throw in a fix for Vader's choke and Kylo's frenzy abilities. Guillaume responds saying that he actually had awesome help in fixing those two abilities specifically and that the fix will be a part of the next patch. I'm not sure what exactly is being fixed on Vader's choke, since you can take your pick from a few bugs for that one, but Kylo's frenzy being fixed will be a huge plus for him. It seems to have trouble locking onto targets sometimes, which is a bummer, because as offensive as it is, the damage reduction Kylo gains from it is very helpful in tanking damage. It's a great ability that's pretty central to Kylo's playstyle, so knowing it's getting fixed is awesome. Next up, I've already addressed this in the past, but I've been seeing some questions about it, and the official EA Star Wars Twitter account again confirmed it, so it's worth mentioning. The cosmetic changes to the Clone Legion skins that we have been waiting for will be arriving in the January update alongside Count Dooku and the Coruscant Guard. Our community manager, Ben Wok, has promised us a transmission going over all of it, so definitely stay tuned for that, but rest assured knowing that the changes are finally coming this month. We've been waiting since, I believe, August, when the skins first started dropping and players noticed discrepancies between the appearances in the games and the clones that we see in the films. Personally, the differences never bothered me that much, but I do respect the dedication and knowledge that some players have on this topic. 
Also, a huge shout out to DICE and everyone on the team working on bringing us these changes because it is a pretty small thing overall that I'm sure is taking up a good bit of development time, all to make the fans happy. Keep it up guys, we really do appreciate all of your hard work. And finally, moving on to some mobile Star Wars gaming news, a new mobile Star Wars shooter is being developed by Boss Alien, a part of Natural Motion Studios, which is the entity behind this new game. I've covered this news in the past, but recently the design director for the game has put out several job listings seeking experienced help in both level design and combat design. We're making inferences from this here, but this tells me that the game will be a decent sized project if they are seeking more help. It also sounds like the game will be fairly layered with multiple levels and a huge focus on shooter combat. The job posting encourages applicants who know their E-11s from their DL-44s both of which are original trilogy era weapons, which may indicate the point in time the game takes place in. I even tweeted at the design director, William, who was kind enough to tweet back. Since I cover canon Star Wars games on this channel, I asked him if this new game will be part of the official canon, or if it's too early to tell. He says it's too early to say anything really, other than what's on the job listings. He looks forward to being able to share more information though, and I will be covering it when it gets here. And that will do it for today's Star Wars Gaming News. Some really cool stuff is happening all across the board, and so far January has shaped up to be a good start to the new year. I'm really looking forward to Count Dooku in Battlefront 2 though. Guillaume saying he was going back to finish the beard made my day. Hopefully we get some shots of it like we did with Obi-Wan and even Dooku's lightsaber. But that will do it from me. If you liked the video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up button, and if you're new to the channel, I hope you consider becoming a subscriber. I appreciate you all stopping by the bazaar. This has been your boy, Turkish Delight, and I will see you all out on the battlefront. Peace. I'll be your host tonight on this magic carpet ride. My name is Aja Pronounce, so call me Turkish Delight. I'm killing the track with all the homies on the mic. Hope they don't mind the hope is up in motion. It's in motion tonight. The mix to drop in soon, probably in mid-June. Just in time for summer and all of the available pool. In the meantime, I'ma roll it up tight. The food is up, I'm about to sing.